Hey everybody, you want me to actually thanks for so coming. Uh, so yeah, this is Intuitive Design with Web Applications. Um, James. James. It's also James. Can you remember? Yeah, so uh, we're with Bridge. Um, and so we'll just like go through a bit of an overview of what like, the bridge is.
for a long time has been on scaling, right, in, in our uh, space, but um, without onboarding, it, it, the scaling doesn't matter. And uh, we kind of have solved scaling, like we've had state channels out for more than a year now, but no one's using them because they don't need to. There's no users, right? And so um, the real focus, and the, this is a post, like James has been thinking about this for a year and a half, uh, just the onboarding like, side of things, like what needs to happen in, in order for the scaling to even matter. Um, and it really comes down to sort of uh, key management. Um, and so that's kind of one of the design principles that, that we're also focused on. Uh, within the account contract design, which is our sort of onboarding uh, piece of the toolkit, we're going to be like for yeah, the, the experience with state channels was like, you know, you're, you're building something that scales, but it's really hard to actually get to that app because you have to download an extension and what happens if you lose your keys, you have this whole onboarding process. So uh, this is what we talk about programmable money, programmable access is, you know, with key-based wallets, which we're all used to, especially coming from Bitcoin, it's like only having a computer with root access, right? And so we've solved that in generalized computing decades ago, and we need to move toward that uh, when it comes to fund management. Um, and in so doing, what you can do from like a user experience perspective, uh, when you're building an app, as a developer, you don't have to force your users up front to like, have to figure out what the mnemonic is. It's pretty scary for like the general user to have to say, okay, well, you know, if you uh, don't write down your private key and you lose it, you're gonna lose access to your funds. But at the same time, don't write it in too many different places because if someone finds it or if it leaks, then they're gonna steal your funds. So there's this like crypto paradox here. And I think in a lot of ways, in order for us to be able to solve collectively as developers for uh, mainstream adoption is to be able to provide that, that safety uh, and recovery mechanisms. Because when you think about it in terms of like a traditional bank, that's part of the service they, they provide is that safetyness, where that safety factor for like fund management that, you know, the bank's going to be around and they're going to hold your money and they're going to keep it so that you make sure you don't lose it. Uh, and it you know, uh, you lose your car, you can always get it replaced. Things like that. And so uh, I think there's a, a lot of things that we can do with contract-based fund management and the whole design space that could be explored for best practices there. Uh, and I think once we begin to adopt these best practices, then you see uh, mainstream adoption happening. Then from mainstream adoption, then uh, it's like this one-two punch where you need the ease of onboarding that will allow apps to be able to uh, have scale and then solve for scalability. Um, and so this is going a little more into what the bridge uh, we offer specifically, and this is like the account contract uh, design again. Um, so non-custodial was, was a primary um, feature that we don't want to do in private keys. Uh, the user is always in control of their money. Um, and right, it's contract based and we use ephemeral keys um, that are related to every instance that the user's logging in with or device that they're logging in with um, in order to access their, uh, their account. So you can also build a, a white list of keys essentially that um, allows for social recovery and, uh, and different recovery mechanisms. Um, and this is just a little diagram to kind of like show what, what, what the system looks like a little bit. Um, so it's like a normal username, password, login, potentially, if you, if you want to link this to a, a typical web 2 off. Um, it's an account contract that, that isn't deployed to chain, but it's created, and then you have multiple device uh, keys, either with your guardian, or um, with your computer, as well as your phone, um, etc. And then, and then the second step to that onboarding process is that fiat run. Um, and so we're working with a number of fiat run providers to also uh, make an easy integration um, for the developers using the toolkit there. <clears throat> we, we skip over uh, channels in this presentation just because, um, just to keep it simpler, but if you all want to talk about our state channel implementation, we're also uh, interested in people using that. So 
Um, from here, we can go to our demo. Um, and I'm actually realizing that we didn't upload any tests to our accounts. We mean, I can do that. Like, oh, you can use this page. Um, yeah, so I think that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So uh, you can either go to that QR code um, or you can go to. So feel free, uh, we have this, let's see, it works in Safari, uh, it works in all browsers, it actually works on your phone, so if you go to playground.abridge.io, uh, you will see this playground, I'm going to actually open it up in Chrome, so that I can fund it through MemMask, my internet connection is really slow. So, real quick, I'm not going to go through everything here in terms of the demo, but you can go to this page. We have the SDK uh, embedded uh, on the site, so there's no plugin, there's no nothing that you need to install. Uh, what you basically get is uh, when you load the page, a burner wallet. So, up on the top in the purple, you'll see that there's a device address. And this is in local storage, a public private key pair gets generated. Uh, I can go to initialize, I can choose my network. So I can go to Robson, Rigby, Coban, or Sokol, which are the test nets. Um, and on the left side are categories of all of our method calls. So they're broken out uh, into several categories for account. What I can do is uh, at first create an account, and you'll see that whenever I like, click on these different method calls, uh, you'll see that yellow part change, and this yellow part is actually at the top the parameters that you would actually input as a developer. Here in the middle part, you have the code that actually you would write. Uh, and uh, you can execute the code if you wanted to by clicking run. And at the bottom here, you have the console output. So if you were to open up your JavaScript console, you would see the exact same thing. We have a whole uh, event-based uh, interface, so you can listen for events as they happen. And then uh, if you click on state, it gives you the whole SDK state object, where at the top it's a, a summary. So what we're doing here now is when you just load the page, you get a burner wallet, you get a, a device address. I'm on Robston. What I can do here is I think I have uh, Kobani, so I'm going to switch to Koban. Uh, and this is the code that, gets, that you would write, and essentially you can just cut and paste. And we have uh, a few implementations that are in production. And they actually use the, the playground for testing and to be able to make sure that they're writing things correctly. And oftentimes, it's just like cut and paste from the code into their specific implementation. And uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to Coban because up here, I don't think you can read it uh, because of the resolution. I'm on Robson, so I can go. I'm going to switch to the Coban. Now I'm on Coban. I have a. a the device address, and what I want to do now is I want to create from this device address uh, a contract-based address. And so this contract that I generate counterfactually means that I'm creating a, an account address, a smart contract that will hold my funds, but the contract is yet to be deployed. And that's what it means by counterfactually creating it. We also have uh, integration into uh, ENS, so you can type in an ENS or just create a, click the random button and it'll create a, a random ENS label for you. When I click run, what you'll see is at the top now, you, instead of just the network and the uh, device address, you have multiple different things in this like top level dashboard. What you have now is an account address, so this account address is that smart contract uh, that's yet to be deployed. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut and copy that. I'm going to go uh, So, 
I'm on Coban, and what I'm going to do is uh, take this, copy that account address, I'm going to send it to some command E. And uh, hopefully my internet connection through MetaMask will allow me to, to send this. I'm not sure what's going on with MetaMask. Um, so uh, if this work, this transaction were to actually deploy, you would actually see that my account balance would increase automatically. We have a listener that will, uh, in the back, that's connected in the, on our backend servers that connect uh, to watch different account addresses. And uh, then you would be able to deploy your account. And what deploying your account does is it uh, would send a signed transaction from your front end. It would hit our relayer. We're uh, actually going to integrate with Gas Station Network now that uh, Gas Station Network is live. Um, and it would then deploy the contract on the user's behalf and then get refunded the gas for deployment from the account balance that if MetaMask, if I was able to send via MetaMask, I would send, let me try to see if I can do this again. Copy. So, if, uh, I, I won't uh, belabor this, it seems like MetaMask is not working at the moment, uh, for some reason. Um, and then, uh, once the account has been deployed, what I could do is, um, I could go into state channels and um, you should go, if you're wanting to hack on this, more than happy to explain this in more detail. Uh, but the state channel implementation is really easy. Uh, you have a bunch of, uh, Categories in terms of payments, and so uh, our state channel implementation, uh, we refer to it as payments. So you can uh, send money into a channel. We have this account balance, which is this virtual balance, uh, which is our off-chain balance. So that uh, similar to other state channel implementations, no gas fee, and it's instantaneous. Um, and you can send uh, to other recipients without them having uh, an ETH address. So uh, we have this notion of uh, anonymous payments as well. Uh, and we have examples of, uh, that you can play around with. We have a tic-tac-toe game example, and uh, you can look at our GitHub repo uh, at the top right you click on it, you can see uh, example code that runs all of this, uh, so that you can essentially Instead of having to start from scratch, you can uh, you know, either look at the repo or uh, look at the uh, code examples. Um, and uh, yeah, we have the notion of uh, account friend recovery. Since this is a contract-based wallet, um, you can uh, have, it's basically a multi-state. So you can have uh, N of M recovery option uh, if you were to uh, deploy the friend recovery extension. So, the idea when we're building out uh, this contract-based wallet, uh, one, we wanted to make it like really easy to implement. We wanted to make sure that you as a developer have full control of the whole experience from beginning to end. Uh, because coming from a gaming background, uh, that like funnel drop-off, having to go to a third-party app, we thought was kind of detrimental. So you as a developer need to own that whole experience from the beginning to the end. And two, uh, in order to be future rich, um, but not have it be too expensive to deploy a contract, we have this notion of contract extensions. And so the account friend recovery is what is considered a, a contract extension. So you'll notice one of the first things that you do is uh, when you're adding your account friend recovery extension is it actually is another contract that is deployed that's attached and that has access to your account-based wallet. 
So other implementations of contract-based wallets um, cost in the dollars. So when we were pricing this out, ETH at that time was about 300 USD for one ETH. Uh, and there are these uh, other contract-based wallets uh, would cost five, between like five to twenty dollars to deploy a contract. Uh, we thought that was too much. So our basic implementation of our contract-based wallet, uh, when ETH is at 300, costs about between 20 and 50 cents to deploy. Because it's very simple. It's just a mapping of device addresses that have access to the contract. Uh, and that's what we use in terms of a design to extend for other types of logic like friend recovery. So when you're, when you're doing friend recovery, you're actually launching a separate contract um, and you're attaching it to that extended logic to your uh, contract-based wallet, essentially. Uh, and we see a, a marketplace eventually someday of people being able, or the other developers being able to create their own uh, type of contract extension for logic. So, for example, if funds come in that are in E or some whitelisted token, uh, you can have a contract extension that automatically converts it via Uniswap to like DAI, for example. So your users can only need to see things that are in like USD to make the user experience easier, things like that. Um, but yeah, that is a very high level overview, and I apologize. Sincerely, I don't know what, what's going on with my MetaMask. I would, I would walk you through uh, the whole process. Uh, it requires funds to, to go into the contract in order to deploy it and to do the state channels, which I can't show right now. Uh, so again, I apologize. So it requires funds to go into the contract that's not deployed yet. That's right. Cool. So what happens is, essentially, I can send you. oh, it's working for you? Well, I have our, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, or do you want to just send me your address? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so it's that account address that has yet to be deployed, effectively, you are like locking your funds in because there's no contract behind it to be able to withdraw funds out. Um, and so what you need to do is once funds hit though, we have uh, an indexer that watches and can automatically deploy the contract on behalf of the user. But that's something that you as a developer, we think, should be in charge of in terms of the actual uh, flow. So there might be use cases where you, in your app, in your context of your app, may want to do that automatically for the user and you can do that. Or there may be times when uh, you don't want uh, uh, to do that automatically. So the SDK is super flexible. And so that's why we created this playground for you as a developer to be able to understand because there are different kind of states. There's pre-deployed contract state, there's post-deployed contract state, um, and you get to choose as a developer how you want to facilitate key management on behalf of the users. Um, the SDK, from a, a design perspective, uh, tries to be as tries to do its best to be non-custodial. So, key management happens locally in the browser. There's no storing of private keys on the server. We don't touch it at all. Uh, as you as a developer, though, uh, having access uh, to the SDK can program things as you wish for, for the end user. And same with our state channel implementation. It's, it's fully uh, non-custodial as well. Do the funds go through? Um, it's, it's not a yeah, I don't know what's happening. MetaMask is not uh, sending up. Uh, 
Well, if, if you all do want like a more proper demo of the playground, feel free to like, get in touch. Um, just have like one last slide on the bounties available. Um, So uh, there's a bunch of, there's like eight example apps that just came out um, uh, that you can do check. Uh, we have a blog post on the, um, also have uh, some QR codes if you're interested on the, for like a native mobile um, app for Frank. Um, it's a video sharing, content tipping sort of uh, app. Really rudimentary, basic, but it kind of gets the point across with account contracts and stage channels uh, integrated. Um, there's also, in the future, for there's going to be a dev portal that allows for a graphic interface, drag and drop, and also uh, data, um, the user data, that you can sort of see what features are really performing and which features aren't to make better design decisions. Um, this is kind of just sort of some of our goals. And then, um, right at this hackathon, we have three different bounties, $500 a piece. Um, essentially, the, the main points are if you create a nice onboarding flow, that, that's eligible. A nice uh, state channel implementation, also eligible. And then the best app UX um, is sort of the third uh, piece. Um, just outside of that, though, if you do just create a sort of like example tutorial of a very like, basic app, that's also something that we're interested in uh, supporting. So um, feel free to ask questions or dig in more. Um, you can find us. We have like our Discord channel is open, so. Can you go back to the QR code with us? Oh, yeah. Cool. Uh, so, this is actually just for the uh, medium post. Oh, um, but I have these flyers right here for Frank oh, um, cool. that have, yeah, <laughs> the download codes. This is actually really cool. So, that's a demo of the. Uh, of the in Berlin? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. 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 Cool. Um, any questions? Sweet. Oh, yeah, thanks guys. Thanks.